In this video, we're going to talk about something called the logical message tree. And essentially, a logical message tree is the way the representation of the message as IIB sees it. So when a message comes on the line, IIB will look at it and it will parse it. It'll break it down into components. And the com way it does that is to buy, is by building a tree. That's the way it does that. And there are four sub trees involved inside the logical message tree. The logical message tree is also called the message assembly. And it has these four sub trees, the message tree, the environment tree, the local environment tree, and the exception list tree. And also notice that there are there is something here called the message tree structure. The message tree is a single sub tree. And the message assembly, which is also known as the logical message tree, is something else that has four all four subtrees. So really this whole structure here, this all four of these subtrees is the logical message tree slash message assembly. But one of those is called the message tree structure. And what does that mean? What does that look like in practice? Well, if we go into our IIB system, we know that these previous systems looked, or these previous message flows that we've been drawing, looked something like this. So we had an MQ input and we have an MQ output. This is essentially exactly what we've been working with. What's new though is this node here called compute. That node comes from the transformation uh, palette, this grouping here, which we know is also called a drawer. And this is the only thing I have changed. So I literally went to transformation and I took compute and I dragged it here and then actually here. And then when you look at compute, if I double click on it, we'll cover this in more detail later, but if I double click on it, we're going to open up the eSQL editor. And what I've done here, this is normally commented out. So, uh, and before I even talk about the commenting out, you do not need to be a programmer uh, to understand, to, to do this work, but you need to understand that eSQL is programming. And, and again, we'll talk about this later. This double dash here is just a comment. So this, is not actually going to run because it's commented out. But this one originally was commented. It originally looked like this. And I uncommented it. And the reason we did that is because of there is a page in the book uh, that we're going to talk about later that asks us to do exactly that. And all it does, all it does is it takes the message that was here and by uncommenting it, it creates a copy of the message when it gets in here. And then it's going to put that in the output. And you might be thinking, well, that's exactly what we did, right? Because originally we had MQ input, uh, but we did it without this compute thing. We had our MQ input. We didn't have this. We went direct into the MQ output. And then sure enough, the out MQ output Q had a copy of the MQ input message. So fair enough. That's exactly right. But when we did that, we weren't able to see the this message tree that uh, is involved. And what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to stop this flow here, this message flow. And again, we haven't gone into what message flow means, but essentially it's just a way to deploy your application. And what I want to do, and whenever you set these up, um, I stopped it and this started it essentially here. Uh, what you want to do is eventually test your messages. How do you do that? You go here and you click on one of these messages and I'm going to give it uh, this particular message here. And I'm going to click on send and we should see some output saying that that worked just fine and then there's a copy there's a, our message right i'll click on close why did i do that well now look what happens click on the highlighted connection to see the content of the message at this location in other words if i click here it parsed the message iib parsed the message and now look at this this is exactly what we were just talking about this is the logical message tree or the message assembly. And you can see all of the constituent parts, right? So in the environment, uh, there's not very much. And in the local environment, there's not very much. Actually, there's nothing. And in the exception list, also nothing. So really, the interesting stuff is clearly in the message itself. And you can see that here. We have message and we have properties. In fact, let's take a look at this before we go into the details. And you can see we have uh, properties element we have an mqmd element and we have an xmlns element and these properties here you'll see are things that you, you know we've been looking at in rfhutil and there are quite a bit of them you all let you look through those 
And then secondly, we have the MQMD. And this should be really, really familiar, not only the format of this, but just in general, because of what we had looked at in the past. What do I mean by that? Well, remember, we had seen that if we were using JMS, Java Messaging System, you, you would see this breakdown. You have the headers and the properties and some sort of data. And then in the MQ system, you're going to have MQMD, and you're going to have data, and then inside that you might have RFH2. And essentially we're seeing this now, right? We're in looking at the logical message tree in IIB, where the message has been parsed. So you start out at the root, and we have properties, the MQMD, and the other headers, and then the body, and then the the rest of the message. So in other words, take a look at this. This is what we are talking about. We start out with message. We go into the message element. We have the sub-element called properties. And then we see all those attributes. And then we see MQMD with all of its attributes, MQMD element and all of its attributes. And essentially, it's exactly what we were looking at. And I should point out, too, that this system, IIB, requires you to have an MQMD. And we clearly did not create an MQMD manually in our test message. It wasn't there. So this is nice because the flow exerciser, this button here, and then specifically when we sent our test message along it, the flow exerciser created the MQMD for us. We didn't enter any of this data. But sure enough, there it is, and the system did it for us. And, re and to be fair, RFUtil will do exactly the same thing. So just keep that in mind because the IIB system is going to expect, and really MQ is going to expect an MQMD header, but if you, you know, we're, we don't want to go through all the effort of manually entering each of those fields, and you don't need to. And here that is in writing. All messages that are received must start with a message queue message descriptor header. If a valid MQMD is not present at the start of the message, the message is rejected and no further processing will take place.